As Vita fans know, the Vita has an excellent library of games. But the Vita doesn't just have its own games to play. You can download PS1 and PSP games to play on your Vita too. Not every PSP game is available to play on your Vita. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core are notable exceptions. But there are hundreds of PSP games available to play. This is my personal top 20 list of PSP games to play on your Vita. I want to point out at the start that I haven't played every PSP game. Persona 3 and Valkyrie Chronicles, for example, aren't on my list because I've never played them. I'd love for you guys to leave a comment and let me know which PSP games you think I should be playing that I've missed out from my top 20. Another caveat, I know different regions have different restrictions in terms of downloading PSP games to your Vita. This list is based on the EU region, so apologies if I've listed something here that isn't available in your region. Number 20, Tekken 6. I love the Tekken series on PlayStation 1. I remember one night me and my friends staying up all night to play and see all the endings of Tekken 3. I had so much fun with Tekken 6 on the PSP. It looked gorgeous on the PSP screen, including the amazing looking CG cutscenes. It had so many modes and things to do, you could customize your fighters, and most importantly it played perfectly. It was also super addictive. Number 19, Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 3 was one of the last games to come out for the PSP. It was a port of the DS and mobile version of the game. It doesn't have the best reputation among Final Fantasy fans, but I really enjoyed it. I thought the updated graphics looked good and the music is amazing and so memorable. The game has much less focus on story and characters compared to most other Final Fantasy games, but I was fine with that. The job system was excellent, allowing you to swap up your party member job and abilities whenever you wanted. I really enjoyed trying to level up and unlock every job to discover the best combination for my party. Number 18, Motorstorm Arctic Edge. Motorstorm Arctic Edge raised the bar of what games could be played on the PSP. It was Motorstorm but on a handheld and it was a joy to play. It had a variety of vehicles, a tough challenge and it felt and played exactly like the console Motorstorm games. The graphics haven't aged well, but the game is still fun to play. Playing it again now makes me wish we had a proper Motorstorm game on the Vita. Number 17, Killzone Liberation. This is a game you need to stick with. I bought Liberation after playing and loving Killzone 2, and when I started playing it, I didn't like it at all. I stopped just after a few minutes. A few months later, I decided to give it another chance, and it just clicked with me. It's a top-down shooter kind of like Helldivers in the way it plays. I found it pretty difficult, so I played it quite slowly and carefully, but there's a great sense of achievement to finishing a tough level. Number 16, Sega Mega Drive Collection, or Sega Genesis Collection as it's known in North America. I love retro games. I had a Mega Drive when I was a teenager. This collection is excellent for retro games, with the Golden Axe series, Sonic 1 and 2, and Shinobi 3 being my favorites. The main omission is Streets of Rage 2. If it had Streets of Rage 2, it would be my top 5. It's such a shame it's missing, but given its cheap price and number of excellent games, this is definitely worth owning. Number 15, Siphon Filter. There were two Siphon Filter games on the PSP, Dark Mirror and Logan Shadow. Both were excellent. Siphon Filter is a third-person stealth action game series that started on the PlayStation 1. The PSP games used the face buttons to control the aiming and camera, which was as close as you could get to having a second analog stick on the PSP. They control even better now on the Vita using the actual right analog stick, making them better to play. The graphics do look dated on the Vita, as does the player movement, but the action and the story is still as good as they were on the PSP. Number 14, Pixel Junk Monsters Deluxe. Pixel Junk Monsters is a tower defense game where you need to protect your babies from being kidnapped by monsters. You build towers out of the trees along the monster's path that shoot arrows, cannonballs, electricity, and much more at the waves of enemies. The game is so hard and addictive. Trying to perfect clear levels keeping all 20 babies alive was so difficult. Each level takes around 20 minutes to beat, and there were so many times I lost a baby in the last couple of enemy waves. Despite being frustrated, I just hit restart and tried again. The graphics and music were great, and there are so many levels and challenges to beat. There's also an HD version out for the Vita. It costs more than the PSP version, but it does have trophies.
Number 13, God of War Chains of Olympus. It seemed crazy to me at the time that the PSP could play a game this good. It was a proper God of War game on a handheld. You had Kratos being angry and killing people, different weapons and powers to unlock, abilities to upgrade, gorgeous graphics, an epic soundtrack, and a decent story too. Aside from the underwater level, this game was amazing. Number 12, Loco Roco 2. Loco Roco is a series synonymous with the PSP. Its cute, cartoony, colorful graphics and fun and easy gameplay made this so enjoyable to play. The controls could be kind of imprecise, but I didn't mind because it just felt like these colorful blobs would be weird and imprecise to control. I really liked filling the Mew Mew House, which was a mini game where you furnish a small house for the Mew Mew creatures, and you unlock more of the game and mini games as you build a house. The music too is so memorable and sticks in your head for ages. Number 11, Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops has a special place in my memories. I was wowed by the PSP from the start, but it hadn't fulfilled Sony's promise of console gaming on the go up to that point. Portable Ops was a proper Metal Gear game, with full camera control, amazing graphics, a variety of guns, a story with twists and turns, and of course, sneaking. I found it so fun recruiting soldiers and I really liked playing it online. It wasn't comfortable to hold and play on the PSP, but on the Vita, you can use the right analog stick, which makes it much better. Number 10, Little Big Planet. Another proper console game on the handheld. Little Big Planet PSP had the same likable gameplay as the console versions, and even let you create levels and upload them. I didn't find it very easy to create levels, and there was a lot of slowdown on the PSP when I tried but the main single player game looked and played perfectly. It also had some really memorable music. I found it was a better little big planet for my kids to play because the level design of the earlier levels was more friendlier to learn the basics than the PS Vita version. Number nine, Wipeout Pulse. The Vita has Wipeout 2048, which is an amazing game. If you're looking for more Wipeout, then Pulse is a great choice. It had the same fast and hectic gameplay as the console and Vita versions, and it looked so good despite being so old. You've got cars to unlock, lots of levels to play, and great music. Wipeout Pure is also on the PSP, which is also very good, but I did prefer Pulse. Number 8. The Capcom Collections. There were two Capcom Retro Collections on the PSP, but I consider them as one entry on this top 20 since they go so well together. These collections contain some excellent classic Capcom arcade games. You got Final Fight, three versions of Street Fighter 2 and Strider to name just a few. These are excellent collections and a bargain to get so many retro games so cheaply. Number seven, Resistance Retribution. Resistance Retribution is a third-party shooter where you take down the Chimera aliens in Europe. The gameplay was excellent. You had a cover system that worked really well, where it auto-clicked you to cover when you got near. The shooting felt good with a variety of guns from the console Resistance games. The game was just fun to play and kill aliens. There was also a multiplayer mode, but that's no longer available. The game also plays better on Vita with the right analog stick. This is just a really good shooter to play on your Vita. Number 6, Final Fantasy IV. One of my favorite Final Fantasy games. I love the story and the characters of this game and how they were so varied in their classes and personalities. The music was so good and so memorable. You also have the follow-up game Final Fantasy IV The After Years in the package. The After Years wasn't nearly as good as Final Fantasy IV, but the base game is just so good and it's such a classic. The story still holds up today with some excellent twists and turns. If you're interested in Final Fantasy games, then this is a pretty good place to start. Number 5, God of War Ghost of Sparta. 
Ghost of Sparta is another God of War prequel game set before the main trilogy. The gameplay is similar to Chains of Olympus. There are new weapons and abilities to unlock, and the game felt like the console God of War games, with the usual puzzles, actions, and gory deaths. The story though was really good, where you control Kratos as he searches for his brother, who he thought had died years earlier. It also looked amazing on the PSP. It was an improvement on Chains of Olympus in every way, and the boss fights felt epic, especially the final one. Number 4. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars I feel a bit overwhelmed playing GTA games. The world is so big and there's so much to do that I end up giving up halfway through just because they're so big. Chinatown Wars was a completely different GTA game. It was a throwback to the original GTA games with top-down graphics, and it was a game I was happy to play for hours and hours. Even just driving around felt fun, and there's a minigame where you buy drugs and sell them for a profit. I would drive around just amassing a fortune from buying drugs from one end of the city and selling them to the other end. The dialogue was also genuinely funny too. Number 3. Dissidia Duo Decum Final Fantasy Dissidia was a dream come true for a Final Fantasy fan. The idea of having epic one-on-one -on -one battles with the heroes and villains from the Final Fantasy games was so exciting, and fortunately, the game delivered. The battle system was excellent and had you leaping, dodging and flying through the air. You felt like a superhero playing this game. There was so much to unlock and do in this game. The story was the weakest element, unfortunately, but the gameplay more than made up for it. Duo Dekin, which was the follow-up to Dissidia, is the one to buy though, as it has more story content and characters, as well as the original game story. The graphics haven't aged well, but the gameplay is still excellent, and you've got an excellent soundtrack of classic Final Fantasy tunes. Number 2. Patapon 2 I don't often play rhythm games, but I found Patapon to be so special and unique. Controlling those angry little warrior eyeballs as they fight to the beat of the drum and sing that catchy song was such a pleasure. Patapon 2 improves on the first game in every way, with more bosses, more minigames and even better RPG elements. I found Patapon 3 to be frustratingly difficult, but 2 had the difficulty set perfectly. Challenging, but not frustrating. Even after finishing the game, I kept playing and fighting bosses as they got progressively stronger and stronger. I put dozens of hours into this game and can still happily pick it up and play more. Number 1. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker A common theme in many of the games on my list is how they were console-like experiences on the PSP. Peace Walker was a proper Metal Gear game, and was, in my opinion, better than Metal Gear Solid's 1-4. You had the recruitment mechanic which was present in Portable Ops, but improved and made easier. The gameplay felt good to play and the story was excellent, and didn't get overly bogged down with all the Metal Gear Solid lore that made it hard for newcomers to the series to get into. The boss fights were a bit of a disappointment because you were fighting mechs or tanks or helicopters rather than a colourful cast of supervillains like in previous games, but they were still fun and addictive. The boss fights against vehicles could be played as a straight up action game, or you could try and stealthily take down its accompanying guards and then capture the vehicle. It added a lot of depth and replayability to the game. You could also play the game co-op, although you had to use the ad hoc party app on the PS3 if you didn't have friends sitting with you with their PSPs. I played it online a few times and it was really good. The game had lots of excellent ideas. When you play Metal Gear Solid 5, you realize that so many mechanics came straight from Peace Walker. So guys, what's your favorite PSP game to play on your Vita? What have I missed from my list? Remember, all opinions are valid, even if they aren't yours. Leave a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching.